you're looking at a thermographic representation of a spiral fracture in the pastern of a thoroughbred racehorse. The image is produced by a Hughes Aircraft Probi infrared uh, camera. At the top of the screen, you can see that we have a window that we're looking through uh, from 24 degrees centigrade to 32 degrees centigrade. Each color on this chart is a half a degree centigrade apart, ranging from 24 degrees to 28 degrees to 30 degrees to 32 degrees centigrade. The hottest color is white, the coldest color is a deep blue, and the middle colors are arrayed from yellows down to reds, down to purples, and down into the blues. So on the uh, leg of the animal, then, you can see that the hottest parts are in the neighborhood of the coronary band, and that area right there is 31.7 degrees centigrade or higher, since that's a white area, 31.2, 30.7, 30 30.2. If you look at the bottom of your screen where you see CT equals, you'll see the exact temperature of the spot uh, being represented by the X, cursor temperature. And you can see that the coronary band is hot. It's, uh, it's somewhat misshapen. Um, it's not a straight line across the foot like it should be. We're looking straight onto the foot, by the way. So the coronary band is unbalanced to the outside of the foot. And as we pass up into the pastern bone, then we get this uh, heat pattern, very distinct heat pattern that crosses uh, in a spiral pattern across the uh, pastern bone. This is a sign of a fracture in the pastern. This is a different view of a different horse and the first thing to notice about this view is that the temperature window is a different window. We're still looking at half a degree centigrade between colors on the chart but now the lowest temperature is at 14 degrees centigrade. The highest temperature is up at 22 degrees centigrade. And you can see on this leg that uh, one leg is extremely hot and bothered, and the other leg is is quite calm. Normally, we would get a more dramatic uh, coronary band appearance on the cold foot. Generally, we like to set these up so that the coronary band is in the yellow ranges, so it's distinct, and uh, the rest of the foot is cooler in the blues. In this case, though, we've got such an extremely hot leg on the uh, left four of this animal that uh, even at this level everything on the uh, left four is out of scale to the high. Everything is white and that means it's 22 degrees or above. So in a situation like that what we do is we move our window up. First we'll take a little hike up the leg. Take a look at what it looks up looks like higher. And again we can see that the inflammation goes traveled all the way up the leg. Uh, on the left side of your screen, we're seeing our rear leg peek through. But now we'll go back down to the uh, bottom of that left fore at a different temperature window. Notice at the top of your screen on the left, we have a 20 degree centigrade low temperature and a 28 degree centigrade hot temperature. Notice that now we can hardly see the horse's right front leg and we can see uh, the left front leg the hot spots within the left front leg. And if we go across to those hot spots, we'll find, of course, that the white is approaching 28 degrees centigrade and that the cooler parts of the leg are in the 24.7 degree centigrade area. Now, if we go across again to the right front leg of the horse and find the warmest part, part that we can still see on that leg, we're at 21.2 degrees. So there's at least a 7 degree centigrade difference between most of the hot areas of the left front foot as opposed to the right front foot. Uh, human uh, feeling can, uh, can feel this degree of change. And right here, we're looking at the XYZ ligaments of that uh, left front. It is likely on this leg that there uh, is more going on even further above what we have here is a suspensory that is lighting up the entire leg and inflaming the entire leg. 
So this is the way this uh, thermographic machine works. It <coughs> sees surface heat. It sees difficulties going on underneath uh, the skin, just underneath the skin. Uh, it will not see um, lesions that are deep into the hips or the shoulders. It has difficulty seeing uh, problems in the stifles, but it will see along the backbone. It will see torn muscles, uh, tied up muscles. And it will see virtually all pathologies that, uh, or injuries that occur from the hocks and the knees down to the feet and into the feet. So it's quite a useful tool. Now we'll go through, uh, we'll start this uh, session with uh, a look at a relatively normal horse. Now unfortunately, we're dealing with racehorses, so most of the horses aren't normal. They have one thing or another going on with them, but we'll try to put together a composite normal horse for you here. In this uh, picture, we're looking at relatively normal feet with a warm coronary band uh, rainbowing down to the toe uh, with no, essentially no unbalanced uh, uh, leaning of the coronary band or the heat of the coronary band to the left or to the right on either on either foot. Uh, everything else in the leg should be cooler than the coronary band. And as we pan up the leg of this horse, we'll see that we have uh, no hot spots in the knees. Uh, the knees are normal and cool. Between the knees, we're looking at the hocks of the horse behind, and we do see some hot spots back there. Basically, on uh, any of these horses that we're looking at, they're, go they're going to be normally warm circulatory channels, and then there are going to be hot spots or hot areas that will show up very distinctly. So in this case, we've got very calm knees, uh, normal, regular feet. Now, in this case, uh, we're looking at a horse that has been racing hard and is showing the signs of wear and tear. The coronary bands are straight across. That's a good sign. Uh, however, uh, the heat of the coronary bands bleeds up into the pastern area. Uh, under normal circumstances, this might suggest uh, ring bone or uh, some kind of uh, lower pastern bone problems. But what we see here is a pair of ankles that are showing us a great deal of inflammation. The horse's left front, which is on the right of the screen, is a wraparound ankle, uh, meaning uh, the heat goes all the way around the ankle. There is no soft tissue in the front of the ankle to uh, be injured, so you have to assume that uh, you're dealing with an inflamed synovial membrane and uh, the entire ankle is lit up because of what's going on inside the ankle. <coughs> the horse's right front uh, shows similar signs. Now uh, we'll pass on up, up, up the leg. Now as between those two pictures we've uh, reduced our temperature. We're looking at the back legs as well as the front now and we can see that uh, with a low temperature of 16 degrees centigrade instead of 18 degrees the entire uh, left front ankle of the horse is out of scale to the high. The left rear is also out of scale to the high and the right rear foot is imbalanced to the inside. Um, what we say when we see a coronary band that drops down and the heat goes all the way to the uh, shoe of the foot uh, or points toward the shoe of the foot in an off-balanced way as that right rear is doing, the foot is probably too long where the heat is. The heat points to a foot that is too long. Further up the leg, we see that we have inflamed hocks and inflamed knees. Down where the uh, MC3 is on the knees, we've got both sides showing heat, um, trouble going on. Below each knee is a hint of uh, possibly a, a splint irritating the horse. We'll take a longer look at that as we go around the animal. These shots from the front are the first shots that we shoot, but then we go around. Uh, to the other areas. Looking from behind the front ankles, we can see that we've got everything hot all the way from the ankles down to the foot. 
Of course, all of this is out of scale uh, to the high, and we want to change our window now so we can pinpoint the hot spots. And so we move from 16 degrees centigrade low temperature to 24 degrees centigrade low temperature. And we see a lot of focus of heat at the suspensory slash sesamoid area on the right front of this animal. This would su suggest that we have sesamoid suspensory XYZ involvement. Further up the leg, uh, on both sides, we've got relatively normal tendons. We don't see any bulges in those tendons. We see suspensories severe, low in the leg. And we see, we're seeing that this, this circulatory channel that goes down between the uh, uh, cannon bone and the tendon is usually warmer, but this one is, these are really hot. Uh, they're expanding uh, at the top of the leg just below the knee, suggesting that we're getting a bleed down of heat from the knees. The knees themselves are inflamed. This is the left rear foot showing the same kind of problem. Uh, the expanded coronary band there is probably sympathetic to what is going on in the ankle. We see a blood vessel crossing the hock on the left rear, uh, probably sympathetic to what is going on down below. And on the horse's right rear, we see a normal circulatory channel. From the outside of the rear, again, that ankle is uh, extremely hot. On the uh, right rear side, we can see how the uh, heat is going clear down into the ankles of that foot. There are the horses standing off the right rear foot that is sore. And we can see how that coronary band is misshapen compared to the one on the left rear. Now, if you let one of these unbalanced feet go, and don't correct the problem, then you end up with a foot that looks like this, where we have a quarter crack uh, surrounded by inflamed foot. The quarter crack itself normally will begin as an inflamed stripe up the foot, uh, but as it uh, gets necrotic and infected, then it tends to cool down a little bit and all the surrounding areas of the foot take up the battle and uh, are sending in uh, white cells to clean up the mess, and they become inflamed, and the um, and the quarter crack itself uh, tends to be cooler than those areas. Uh, this is a, a severely lame horse at this point in time, but uh, uh, will heal when that uh, quarter crack grows out, or when a, a patch is put into the foot. Now, here is a set of ankles that uh, shows trouble in both sides, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Clearly, the uh, left front foot of this horse is in deep trouble, and the right front is, is less severe. But when we look at, uh, look for hot spots in a horse's uh, foot, uh, generally we're looking for uh, differentials between the hot area and the cold area uh, of 2 degrees centigrade, calling that significant. And so when we look over at this leg, right below this hot spot at the ankle, uh, the temperature is 11.7 .7 degrees centigrade. And when we move up into the hot spot, we see 14.7, 15.2 at the hottest spot. <coughs> we have to call that ankle sore, even though it's far less inflamed than is the ankle on the, le on the left side. On the left side, we're looking at temperatures that are at least uh, up into the 18 degree area over there. So we have to call both sides injured. We certainly can see, it's very dramatic that we can see uh, uh, a lot of problems in the uh, left front foot of this horse. Now these two legs uh, would be palpable. The temperature differences between these two legs you can feel, but you may not be able to uh, feel the difference between the two areas that we looked at on the uh, on the right front foot. And 
that's where a good temperature measuring device comes in handy. This, uh, the Hughes ProBuy, is a is a fantastic machine, but it's quite expensive. Uh, you can use tools called pyrometers that you can point at various spots on the horse and get accurate to a tenth of a degree centigrade estimates of the heat uh, from point to point and you come up, come up with the same information that you're seeing on this screen with those. Again, a different horse, same kind of a situation. On the uh, left front leg, we've got a problem even though it's not as dramatic as the problem on the on the right front. Again, the temperature at this point, uh, right in that hot spot of the ankle, is 15.2 degrees. And if we drop down into a more normal part of the leg, we're seeing that the lower temperatures are 11.7 in that, in that neighborhood. And again, uh, most of the area on the right front of this horse's leg is 18 degrees or, or higher. So we have a horse that's in trouble on both sides. Notice that the left front of this horse is unbalanced to the inside at the foot. Uh, hot on the inside. It's very likely that this horse is long shod on the inside of uh, the left front. Here we have uh, a hot shin in a thoroughbred. And shins generally do show up as uh, very localized hot spots uh, when they get very serious, they can uh, puff out and look like a reverse bow. Uh, in this case, this one is a straight-shinned horse that uh, is slightly off in the right front, and we're trying to figure out why, and we come up with uh, this very localized hot spot right in the middle of the shin, uh, much hotter than the foot. Uh, you can see the coronary bend of the left uh, foot in the picture. And again, there is some ind indication, some slight indication of a shin on the left front as well. Um, these locations uh, should always be x-rayed because uh, you never know whether you're looking at a fracture, from uh, a hairline fracture, or uh, just uh, a buck shin, which is lots of uh, little tiny fractures and uh, you should be looking at these. We had uh, a horse that showed a picture something like this, uh, except that the area that you see as hot here uh, was showing as extra cold, very cool area. And that shin turned out not to be a buck shin as we had expected. In fact, the shin started out looking like this shin right here with a hot spot in the middle of it. Later on, though, when the horse came lame, uh, the shin changed uh, to an extent that uh, the area of the heat then turned cold and the rest of the leg turned hot. And uh, that was a, a hairline fracture that went into the cannon bone about a half an inch. I mean, the, the leg could have broken off uh, the next breeze. And we couldn't see it uh, early on when we first saw a picture like this. Uh, we did x-ray, and normal x-rays don't necessarily show you or tell you that you have a hairline fracture until that fracture tends to open up a little bit uh, with more work, more racing, or whatever. This horse, uh, not the horse that we're looking at here, but the other horse, uh, had, between the time we saw the first signs, like we're seeing here on, on Jack here, uh, the other horse uh, won seven races in a row until he came up lame after a race and then uh, we did a xerographic x-ray and sure enough he had a, uh, an important crack in his uh, cannon bone and that crack on the thermography showed cool in a spot just like the spot you're seeing here looking hot. Now you have to be careful about uh, the way ambient temperature affects uh, these horses. Here we're looking at a, a scan that starts at a, a low of 10 degrees and a high of 18 degrees. And it looks like we've got extremely inflamed feet. But uh, what we know about the picture we're looking at is that th that white area is higher than 18 degrees or 18 degrees. 
and uh, it's not telling us anything. We're not seeing anything here. What we're seeing is that we're our, our window is set too low. We're expecting something different than uh, what we see. If we look on up the leg, uh, we can see that, sure enough, the lower leg certainly is inflamed on both sides, uh, and those feet are probably uh, sympathetic to something that's going on above them. Uh, but we're still set at 10 degrees low, and what we want to do is just raise that window up enough so that we can see exactly where the problem really is. And in this next picture, we see <coughs> that we have relatively normal feet. We've got uh, coronary bands that uh, are straight lines right across the foot with no hot spots in them. Uh, uh, real normal coronary bands. Now again, look at the top of the scale and you can see that the uh, temperature is 18 degrees centigrade low to 26 degrees centigrade high. And now we can see that where the problem is, especially in that right front, is the ankle. The ankle is inflamed and that inflames the entire leg. Uh, and the ankle is uh, at least the same temperature as the coronary band of that right front foot. On the left front, we've got ankle too, but it's not as much of a wraparound ankle as we have on the uh, right front. So the left front is uh, a slightly healthier angle, ankle. Um, both of these uh, ankles are having trouble, and both of them are causing the feet to be warm and the shin bones to be warm and possibly uh, tissues higher than that. When you get a, an acute injury, it tends to light up the whole leg, even though those areas that are experiencing the trouble are going to be, in general, hotter than any other place on the leg. Now, this is a hot knee, and it shows characteristics of two kinds of problems. Uh, the first kind of a problem that we uh, commonly see in uh, young hor horses uh, when they start going to work is kind of an epiphysitis uh, problem. And on this left front knee, the area to the inside of that knee, right up and down through there, that's the area that will tend to light up all by itself and indicate um, epiphysitis uh, and growth plate open knee type. Uh, irritations. On the other hand, uh, into the knee, into this area over here, uh, where the uh, third metacarpal bone is uh, located, that's an area that when it lights up, then you've got something going on internal, internal to the knee, probably involving the third metacarpal bone, which is the most commonly injured or chipped bone. So the outside epiphysitis type uh, appearance is something you want to be aware of and be ready to back off and give the horse some time. Uh, but the inside uh, appearance of this knee uh, on the right of your screen, the left knee, this area right down here is trouble. That's an injury that you better x-ray and you better, you better start taking care of. So babies will tend to have this uh, inside of the knees heat uh, come and go as they go through the initial uh, process of training. Uh, you've got to be careful of it. You've got to be back up uh, and control it. Uh, you might uh, want to be uh, feeding uh, chondroitin sulfate or giving uh, adequan treatments uh, to a horse that's showing signs like this because you don't want that epiphyseal plate to light up and get irritated and develop osteochondrosis or degenerative joint disease. Now here you're looking at relatively normal post-exercise hocks. Uh, there is a blood vessel that comes down through the hock, through that area, and up around the hock through these areas, if you can follow that uh, cursor up and down there. That's, that is basically a normal post-exercise uh, blood vessel. But now over in this area right here where the X is, I'll take it out and take it back in so you can see it go in. That area right there is the one that's going to light up and uh, call a hock for you when it uh, does occur. That generally low joint in the hock and that's the one that you see most often lighting up and giving you some extra heat problems. Going down the leg is the circulatory channel. Uh, this is a normal channel. If we had changed our reading a little bit and wanted to light up more things, uh, we could lower 
from 24 to 22 degrees on our low end of the scale and that would turn yellow for us. Now as you get higher on the legs, uh, on the knees and the hocks up into the area just where the uh, meat of the horse begins, up in this area where the uh, X is traveling across right now, that's always going to be hotter than down on the lower legs and that goes for the knees too. As soon as you get up into the forearm muscles uh, you're going to have heat that overrides anything that you can see with the infrared or heat sensing devices. Again there's the right rear and in the area where we would be looking for a problem we do see a little bit of heat in that area. Again this is not a screaming hot hock. Uh, it can be a lot hotter than this. And this is a post-exercise hawk which is always warmer than uh, one from a horse taken at rest. Now this is an interesting horse because he's got multiple problems. Uh, the first thing we can see, even though the uh, ankles in this case are not um, yellow or white, we can see a dramatic difference between the temperature of the ankle on this right front area, which is 30.2 degrees centigrade, and uh, the coronary band uh, of the foot, which we'll go over and look at the left front coronary band and just pick up that temperature real quick here. There should be nothing hotter on the leg from the knees and hocks on down than the coronary band, and what we're seeing here is a uh, a 25.2, 26 degree uh, coronary band with uh, temperatures uh, ranging in the 30s up at the ankles. So right off the bat we know that we've got a pair of wraparound ankles here, meaning that there is likely to be some internal um, injuries to the ankle rather than uh, just looking at uh, suspensories or uh, XYZs or something like that. Now let's just uh, follow on with this horse. We'll go on up the leg. Move a little higher. We see some indication on the right front uh, that there may be a splint trying to form and I'll take the arrow over there so you can see what we're talking about. Right there. That's an indication. We're looking still from the front of the horse and that's an indication that we're we're seeing more than we want to see there. <clears throat> and now up into the knee, we can see on the right front that we've got a uh, third metacarpal area inflammation. Uh, real worrisome right there. We're showing signs in the other knee that we've got activity that it may not be third metacarpal but is certainly involved in uh, some activity in the knee going on we're worried about. Down on the shin, we can see that uh, at the hottest point of the shin we're sitting on a temperature of approximately 28.7 degrees and we're looking down on the part of the shin that we can see. This area, this black area is below what we can see but 24.2 up to 28.2, 28.7 that's uh, 4 degrees centigrade and that's a very significant difference even though that's not hollering out in yellow colors because of the way we've got our window set here on this on this picture. That's a very hot shin. Now let's move on to a side view of these legs of the same horse. Now while we do show some ankle uh, and show some suspensory area heat, uh, the fact that we can see distinct uh, suspensory and uh, deep flexor tendons in the, uh, in the area of that right front, which is the one on the left of your screen, it's the outside of the right front that we're looking at here. Um, this is not a ba as bad a suspensory as, it, as a suspensory can get. Um, if this was a baby just starting, this is not, but if this was a baby just starting work, this is the way their uh, tendons uh, tend to light up uh, just as a matter of course and this, this would not be something to worry about. This is in a racehorse, an aged racehorse, this is showing some wear and tear, but this is not a critical 
uh, suspensory at this point. Now we definitely see on the left front, and that's that's the one on the right of your screen. We definitely see a splint on that on that one. Uh, I'll move the arrow up to it or the cross up to it so you can see what I'm talking about. But that little button up there, right in that area, right there, that is an active splint talking to us. And because that splint is active, it's inflaming the areas behind it and back into the uh, circulatory area of the leg so that all up and down here we've got a little bit of extra heat that we wouldn't want to see. But again, that's not a very hot, that's kind of a normal vascular pass passage there with the added effect of the splint on the inside of the left front. Uh, on the right front we're looking at the outside and we're seeing a relatively normal circulatory process up there with just a hint of more heat that we want to see just below the knee. Again, I would not call the uh, right front a problem. I would call the left front a problem because of the way uh, that splint lies. Now this is the same pair of legs from the other side. Uh, the closest one to us, the one on the right of your screen, is the horse's left front ankle. And we can see there's a hot spot in that ankle on the outside. Not back at the suspensory area, but up into the joint. On the uh, right front, there is a, a slight uh, amount of heat at the suspensory, uh, and both of those, you know, definitely are showing wear and tear. Uh, in my mind, they're not showing anything real, real critical at this point. Moving up the legs uh, again, we've got normal circulatory channels on both sides, with again the hint of a splint trying on the uh, inside of the right front right over in here. Now this one is not anywhere near as hot as the one that's on the left front, but it is a splint trying. Uh, at the tendons, uh, we can see that both of the tendons are very straight. If we start to get a tendon, we'll start to get a bulge, and not a bulge in the actual tissue, but a bulge in the heat pattern. And we're not seeing that on either side, so the tendons on this horse are in pretty good shape. Now here you have a pair of hawks that are in trouble and uh, the main thing you can see is on this uh, left hawk you've got a lot of inflammation all the way from the low part of the joint up into the high. It's all a very solid hot spot. On the right rear hawk which is on your left side of the screen again a very hot spot right in the area of the lower joint of the hock that we would expect to start seeing um, the problem begin. So this hock in contrast to the other hock uh, which did show a heat pattern we're not looking at blood vessels here we're looking at uh, relatively severe problems. Now this horse is racing and happily racing and not showing lameness. Uh, in fact, most of the horses that we're looking at in these pictures are not horses that are uh, laid up and crippled and out of the ball game. These are racing horses that are earning money, even though once in a while they're showing some aches and pains. So little things uh, will mean a lot to the thermography, and the thermography or heat, any kind of heat sensing, including your hands, uh, is going to feel something going on even if the horse is not lame and unfortunately it's uh, once the horse is lame it's it's too late to start searching for where the problem is you need to find the problem before it becomes critical now this same horse uh, in the front shows a very normal circulatory channel between the tendon and the cannon bone in this case the tendon is to the right and the cannon bone is to the left. Uh, that's typically what a normal circulatory channel will look like. Let's just investigate how much of a temperature difference there is from the cannon bone, which is at about 25.7 degrees, to a high of 30.7. You're looking at five degrees difference between the cannon bone area and uh, the circulatory channel. So if you've got a uh, thermographic device that warns when you pass from 
uh, a low temperature to a high temperature and you get to two degrees and you get a little blinking light and you get to three degrees and you get a big blinking light, if you're passing from the cannon bone to the circulatory channel on those front legs from here to here uh, and you get a warning, uh, disregard the warning, that is not uh, a problem. All that circulatory channel is supposed to be warmer. Now here's another example of uh, a buck shin that could as easily be a fracture. Uh, we're looking at a temperature differential here uh, from 24.7 degrees up above uh, 28 degrees in this area so we're at least looking at a four degree change right in the middle and the high part of the cannon bone. These should be x-rayed. Um, you never can tell what you've what you've got going. Now up into the knee of this horse it looks like there is uh, there are problems going on in this knee as well. Uh, some of that could be sympathetic to what's going on below especially since it's uh, to the inside of the knee uh, not in the metacarpal area, but actually in the area where you would ex expect to see uh, epiphysitis type uh, heat. Sometimes that uh, area will heat up sympathetically to things going on down below. In this case, this knee has got enough generalized information in it that I would suspect that there is not only a shin going on here, but some, uh, some knee problems as well. Now, the thing about heat patterns uh, versus uh, x-ray and uh, ultrasound uh, diagnostics, ultrasound sector scanning, heat patterns tell you where but they don't tell you what and uh, when you get an abnormal heat pattern you're at the beginning of your diagnostic process. You know something's going on here, you don't know exactly what is going on here and it's time to bring in the rest of the diagnostic tools into, until you can know definitely what you have. Uh, infrared thermography or any kind of a heat sensing uh, technology is good for locating problems but not defining the problems and to do appropriate uh, therapy you know, have to know exactly what you're dealing with so this is just the start of the process this is hey doc look here and he looks with x-ray he looks with ultrasound uh, he looks with uh, synovial uh, fluid analysis etc 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 he finds the problem uh, the, the exact problem after the thermography uh, indicates that this is the area where the problem exists. Same leg, same horse. Uh, we've moved our temperature window up two degrees centigrade so that we can locate the hottest spot of that shin problem and we can see moving the cursor over we can see exactly where it is right in that area and basically what you would say is doc that's where I want the x-ray taken right in that area. Have something suspicious there. Same horse, same day, a pair of hawks that are in trouble. The left hawk is uh, in more trouble, that's the one on the right side of your screen, than the left, than the right. So uh, again, you can x-ray these areas, you can treat these areas, you can uh, ultrasound scan them if you want to, but we do know on this animal that we do have a hawk problem that has to be gone after. Sometimes they'll put uh, hyaluronic acid in there, sometimes they'll inject corticosteroids. Uh, corticosteroids are not the smartest thing in the world to be doing unless you have to win Friday's race and you don't care what happens after that. But those hawks right there are probably very sore, especially that left rear. And again, the temperature differentials that you're looking at. Uh, lower on the leg, you're looking at 27.2 degrees up into the hot spots. You're looking at 29.2, 29.7 in that area, 2 degrees, and that's uh, a significant difference. Uh, the coldest area of the leg is clear over here at 22, 23, that area. Those are hot hocks. Uh, again, <coughs> the size of the heat pattern is a significant part of what we're looking at here. Uh, we don't have little stripes and little spots of heat. We've got 
pots that are lit up bright from top to bottom basically. We're not looking at uh, a blood vessel going across on either of these hocks. Uh, we're looking at uh, some very strong indications of inflammation just below the surface of the, of the skin and it's pretty widespread. Little spots we might not worry about quite as much. Uh, there's very active repair going on in these hocks. Okay, now here's, uh, let's just walk through a horse here. This uh, horse starts out looking like he's got some very hot feet. Uh, those coronary bands shouldn't be that hot all the way down into the foot like that. These feet are, are very warm. But now this is not normal uh, for foot problems. Uh, generally you see an unbalanced foot and you see a foot that has a hot spot in it. Instead these feet are they look relatively balanced, uh, but they're just hot. Uh, that would suggest that uh, something is going on above these feet that is causing them to uh, experience extra circulation and that we're not seeing something in the feet themselves. So let's look further up the leg. Now, uh, for the first thing, on the right side of your screen you can see a rear foot peeking around the inside of the knee or the top part of the shin on that left front leg of the horse, so don't worry about that. On the uh, right leg <coughs> we see a splint and an indication that there might be a little bit of shin activity, but uh, the temperature differentials uh, at the ankle and the shin uh, while they are there and would indicate that there is some inflammation coming or going, uh, we don't have a screaming hot ankle at this point. It does wrap around, it is worrisome, but it just doesn't look like a, an ankle injury looks. Uh, for example, right there the temperature is 26.2 degrees, we drop on down, we're into 27.2, 27.7, got about a degree and a half uh, difference in temperatures with ad adjacent tissues. Worrisome, but not, not a critical thing. Uh, up at the uh, point of the splint bone, we definitely have a hot spot. So we can say, first of all, that this horse has got a splint on the right front inside. Now we can't see from this view, this, is, this part right over here is the rear foot peeking around the corner. So I really can't tell here, but it looks as though we're going to see uh, from a side view, we're going to see some stuff going on behind these ankles. Uh, and let's just move on to a side view. Now let's where we're going up to the knee first. Uh, again, uh, the type of knee we have on that left front is a worrisome knee. Uh, it's the epiphysitis sign or the inflammation sign in a knee, that area right through there. Um, that's where babies will start to uh, inflame when they're getting a little bit too much work for what their knees can stand. Uh, this horse is a relatively young, it's a two-year-old horse, but it's a race horse. It's been racing for a while. You wouldn't expect to see that much activity in a knee unless you had something going on uh, with the cartilage of the knee. All right, now let's see if we can get a side view of this, of these legs. Whoops, here we are. Big, big trouble. And this is localized. Uh, this is the kind of uh, leg you get when you chop the heels off and lay down those uh, feet to 47 degree angles. You end up with uh, inflammation all the way up the leg from down at the XYZ ligaments, which are behind the pastern bone, down in that area. Uh, a lot of times the heel of the foot is extra hot and we'll see if we can find some feet like that for you. But then all the way up the leg you get these uh, this big fat circulatory process. Let's move on up the leg if we can. And it goes all the way up underneath the knee. And see how fat and thick that uh, circulatory channel is. That's an abnormal circulatory channel. Uh, it's telling you that we've got stretchy um, suspensories. Uh, again, no bumps at the tendons to indicate tendon, but we've got stretchy, stretchy suspensories for sure. On the other side, we're still seeing, uh, that's the right front of the horse, we're still seeing an indication of uh, um, shin down at the uh, 
same level that we were looking at the splint. Right in this area, we're, we're seeing a shin indication there. Uh, that's something that probably doesn't need to be x-rayed at this point, but it's a warning saying this horse is taking some punishment in this area, and this may turn into something that sores him up or may turn into a fracture. Again, the inside of that knee you can see up high. Uh, there is a possibility uh, with this knee that it is just like the feet. It is sympathetic to that overstretched uh, uh, suspensory ligament below. We're getting an awful lot of circulation uh, down into that area. There's a lot of repair going on in that suspensory, and there are blood vessels traveling down the outside of that or the inside of that knee that might be feeding this area below, and that may be why we have the uh, inflammation in the inside of that knee. Very. Uh, serious suspensory problem that can probably be alleviated by lifting the angle about two degrees, maybe even using a, uh, an angle pad and, and just taking some of the pressure off that suspensory. This horse is probably carrying an angle far too low for what it actually needs. Here's a look at, uh, we just raised the window a little bit to get a closer look at what's going on. We see that the most of the stress in that uh, uh, suspensory is at mid-suspensory, right down in the middle. This is the other leg. Uh, this is the right front inside that's on the left side of your screen. Uh, much more normal circulatory channel. Uh, but with that uh, splint area lit up with a little arrowhead pointing to. Now, we don't see so much of a button of a splint in this leg as we would expect, and that leads us to believe uh, more that we're looking at uh, uh, more shin activity than we are splint activity. I'll move the uh, crosshair over to where I'm talking about. This is the inside of the right front. And this area right here is that arrowhead. Now, generally, when you're looking at a uh, side view like this, uh, this little pointer that points toward the shin is an indication that you have a shin problem uh, coming on. There are two little blood vessels right in through this area right here that uh, feed the shin, and uh, they ha just happen to be right in the same area as the, s the top of the splint bone. So, And we do have a little round, warm spot over here by the splint bone. It's not that we don't have a splint going on. We probably do. But this indication out here is shin. It's saying shin. So this horse has, has got multiple problems, uh, one of which is probably a shin on the right front side. Now here's a horse that uh, has uh, definitely more action in the left front than in the right front. The left front is on the right side of your screen. But both feet are unbalanced to the inside, in other words, long on the inside. And sometimes uh, this will happen, sometimes you're trying to do some uh, corrective shoeing or something like this. but. Whenever you start fiddling around with the level of the feet, in other words, angle side to side as opposed to angle front to back, uh, you can run into these situations where uh, the foot is long on the inside. I'll just move over to the cooler foot for a minute. Right there we have an indication that we have uh, extra pressure on that coronary band right on the inside of the foot. Now when this occurs, <coughs> the coronary band tends to believe that uh, there is extra footwear going on down down below, and uh, it lights up and uh, sends more foot in that direction. Uh, f uh, horses that are not shod going over rocks will, if they're leaning on one side or the other of the foot, that side will wear away, and so the coronary band is built to grow more foot in that area. If we have a shoe on in this area, though, what happens is that uh, the foot does not wear away and gets extra long, and then the foot pushes up into the coronary band and heats it up more and more until we develop a foot that looks like this foot on the other side. Now, uh, let's look further up the leg, and we can see that we're seeing some inside suspensory, inside ankle possibly, in this horse. and. 
if the ankle is, if the inside of that foot is hitting harder than the outside of the foot is, the first place to receive the blow after the foot itself is going to be the inside of that ankle. And you can see that the inside of the ankle is starting to light up as well. You can't do much in the way of corrective shoeing without uh, possibly running into trouble. If this uh, inside of the foot uh, is allowed to grow and grow and get longer and longer and more and more unbalanced, then pretty soon it'll start uh, overlapping the shoe. It'll start going outside of the shoe and the whole foot will start to collapse on the inside. So when you see these problems beginning, uh, you have to uh, correct it and not, uh, not allow that foot to get misshapen and not allow the inside of the ankle to receive uh, the extra pounding that it's going to when that part of the foot hits the ground first. You want the foot to hit the ground like a cup with all the edges of the wall of the foot hitting it at the, at the same time if you can, if you can get that job done. Now this is a different horse, but this is the kind of uh, sole a uh, foot like that that we just looked like uh, just looked at is going to have. First, where the X is, that's the shoe, and you go inside, and here is the cleft of the foot. Notice that it's uh, extremely warm compared to the other side. This is a, the other side is a normal cleft of the foot. The cleft will be warm. The frog will be cool. Uh, the sole should be, in general, as cool as the frog is. Uh, in this case, what we have is a lot of inflammation in the sole and then a very, very hot area in the sole right up at the corner uh, where, uh, where the shoe is coming across. The shoe is probably impinging on that area. Just imagine that the foot is hitting right here. That's where the foot is hitting the ground first and hardest, and it's probably inflaming uh, all of the area under there. Pretty soon the bulbs of the heel will, uh, this inside heel, they'll get hot and then later on they'll get infected and you've got a huge, huge problem to correct. So that's what a bad foot looks like uh, from underneath. Now the same horse, uh, again this is not the horse we were looking at just a minute ago, but uh, here's a horse with two bad front feet. Here's the other front foot. Lots and lots of problems. Again, most of it on the inside. This is the right front foot of the horse. Uh, on the inside, the whole sole is inflamed uh, all the way up to uh, the heels. Um, this horse has is, is got a major problem and probably has a very, very sore foot on the right front. And the left front is probably sore at the inside heel. Um, this particular horse is a standard bred that has been being shod off himself. Uh, by changing the level of his feet and uh, unfortunately um, corrective shoeing again can do just so much and then pretty soon you're starting to have foot pathologies rather than uh, interference and uh, you certainly don't want foot problems because if uh, you get that then everything else goes wrong. Everything tends to start at the feet and, and go wrong on up. So this horse is landing hard on its heels, it's landing hard on its inside heels, and the whole inside of this, this foot is inflamed. Now here is a horse um, with a lot of uh, problems, a race horse, racing and winning. At this point he still goes on to race and win, but I want you to look at this shin on the left front. Got a very acute little hot spot right here. Um, at this point the horse was x-rayed, uh, showed no signs, uh, and was showing no signs of lameness even with all the other things that were going on with him. The horse was happy and, and running and winning and, and doing fine. Um, but I want to show you uh, what he looked like after about three more wins. Okay, notice that it's uh, a colder day. We've got uh, uh, very, very hot shin uh, on the left front. Large expanse of heat. Uh, the coronary bands are not even visible in this because uh, they're much, much cooler than the uh, shin. This is a fracture. Uh, and it's not a it's not a bad fracture. This horse is still walking sound, although he's coming out of his races a little bit gimpy on that left front. Still walking sound, but 
this is the same horse that showed the beginnings of what appeared to be a buck shin earlier on. Notice that we're at 13.2, 13.3 down at the lower parts of the leg, and we're way up over uh, uh, 20 degrees in this in this wide area. Comparing that to the other leg, uh, we've got uh, you know seven, six or seven degrees at least difference between the two shin bones. This is f definitely feelable. If you've got something like this that you can feel with your hands, the likelihood is that you're dealing with uh, more than a buck shin. You've probably got a fracture underneath there. And this this leg at this point does x-ray as a fracture, but uh, earlier showed no signs of a fracture and showed not much signs of a, of a splint. I mean of a, <laughs> of a shin. Now this horse uh, shows some signs that we see in both standard breads and thoroughbreds. What you're looking at is a side view of the front legs uh, and the hot areas are right up underneath the knee. Uh, you know at the back of the knee there's an accessory carpal bone and there is uh, an accessory carpal channel that go that leads up underneath that bone and tends to be uh, part of the circulation that involves the carpal bones in the knee and also tends to be part of the circulation that involves the tendons lower down the leg. These horses that show heat in this area act as though they have knee problems, uh, act as though they might have a knee chip or something like that. Um, this is very difficult to, uh, to diagnose uh, because there's no, uh, in a horse like this, there'll be no heat in the knee itself, especially in the front of the knee. But uh, if you find heat this high up, and again, this leads right up into the accessory carpal bone. It's not a check ligament area. The check ligament area is further down the, the leg. If I was seeing heat and check ligament, I'd be looking down in this area and look for a big fat blotch of heat right through this area here. Instead, what we're looking at here is heat that extends on up into the knee. And peters out about midway down the uh, uh, circulatory channel. So basically our, our heat is feeding uh, from above. Uh, what do you do about this? Uh, it's, it's hard to say. And what's causing it, that's also hard to say. It's probably something uh, to do with concussion. Uh, some veterinarians will say that this will lead to uh, bowed tendons later on. Other ones will say that you're dealing with uh, knee joint problems that are interior to the knee that you can't see from from the outside. So heat high just under the knee, uh, back in that circulatory channel that shouldn't be as hot as it's showing here, uh, would indicate that kind of a problem, something in the knee possibly or possibly uh, something is going to happen to the tendons. My preference, my belief and experience is that it's more likely something going on in the knee than uh, in the tendon. These tendons on this horse don't show any signs of uh, uh, problems. On the other hand, here's a tendon in big trouble. Uh, we've got a tendon bumps and lumps all the way down to the fetlock and all the way up through the check ligament area and the check ligament uh, also has an involvement in in this soreness. That is, while it's not a full-fledged bow in terms of the out outward appearance, uh, this is a bowed tendon. By definition, if you took a, an ultrasound sector scanner and looked at that tendon, you'd find several areas of um, tears in the tendon. This is another example of a very obvious uh, splint on the left front inside. Left front is on your right right side. That leg also seems to have a little bit more circulation going on than we'd like to see. Probably has other things going on, but for certain that's what a hot looking at you splint looks like. Definitely a high spot of temperature. And it's not the arrowhead formation that we were talking about before that points to the shin. This has got a hot spot in it, and that's a splint. Here's a very obvious low suspensory. Uh, the suspensory comes down and attaches to the ankle and, and tends to wrap around the ankle. 
this uh, suspensory is hot, not necessarily at the sesamoids, but at the attachment place where it uh, actually comes down and starts to wrap around the ankle. Uh, this is very common. Uh, when you see a horse with a suspensory, almost always it looks like this. This is a standard bread. Standard breads tend to wiggle their ankles back and forth and blow suspensories more than thoroughbreds do. Thoroughbreds tend to have suspensories that reach all the way up through the leg and down through the XYZs. You can see the XYZs in this picture are also uh, inflamed, but not as much as you would see on a thoroughbred. <coughs> the thoroughbred, the whole back of the leg would light up all the way up to the knee, typically. Thoroughbreds get their suspensories more from uh, low heel, long toe shoeing. Standard breads get theirs from uh, one side of the foot slapping down harder than the other side and just pulling that suspensory out. They're going around half mile tracks on very hard tracks and their suspensories tend to pull more than thoroughbreds do. Thoroughbred suspensories tend to be overstretched by poor shoeing. Now here's a real unusual tendon. This is not a bow. Um, this horse has a blood vessel that wraps around outside of the tendon, right in there. Uh, once in a while you see this, and these probably could cause trouble, like a, maybe like a varicose vein causes trouble, but this is not a bow. And one of the things when you're looking at temperature on legs is you always want to make sure that you're not looking at uh, one type of a blood vessel or another. Something like this can scare you to death. This is a racehorse that's still racing and is having no problems whatsoever racing, <coughs> but it sure looks like he has a bowed tendon in this picture. It's not. It's a blood vessel. Now this is a typical thoroughbred suspensory. Uh, except that the XYZ area is not as lit up as it normally would get. Um, again, typically the cause of this is low heel, long toe, delayed breakover, a lot of pressure put on the uh, rear part of the fetlock. Now as you look up the leg, uh, actually it gets hotter up into the leg. We're still looking at suspensory, but the hottest part of the suspensory, even though that ankle area was extremely hot. Uh, the hottest part of this is up uh, further into the leg. That suspensory is hot all the way up and typically that's the way a thoroughbred suspensory will look is much more extensive all the way up the leg still right down that uh, suspensory line. No tendon involvement here. Now some people believe that painting the knees and the hocks, the ankles with a caustic solution is going to cure whatever problem underlies the skin and while that's very unlikely you're going to encounter a lot of these as you're looking at uh, knees and hocks. This is what they look like when they've been painted. A lot of information uh, it's very difficult to tell on uh, this picture at least uh, if there is anything going on in the knees or not. Uh, the paint has caused the whole skin to inflame. However, if I move my window up, I can see through that paint and I can see that in these knees uh, actually nothing is really going on. There's not any real serious um, problems with uh, with the knees. No hot spots, no bleed downs uh, into the knee from temperatures up above. These are pretty clean knees. There are art artifacts like this that you're going to run into and you don't want to get fooled by them. Now here's an interesting set of feet. Um, <laughs> cool spots right in the middle of the foot. Uh, this would look. This is what a standard bread would look like if he was wearing toe weights. This is a thoroughbred with no, no toe weight on him at all. Hard to tell what we're looking at here. We just look a little higher, move the temperature down a little bit so we get more dramatic exhibition of it. We seem to see uh, some inside unbalance in the feet, uh, heat toward the heel as well. 
on the left front we're seeing a little bit of XYZ. Real hard to figure what's going on in, this, in these feet. Something is not right, but from these pictures we can't tell what we're seeing. Here's a closer look at the uh, right front. Again, it's, the foot is very warm to the inside. There's the left front. Something's not right with these feet, and I can't tell you what it is because of the day this picture was taken, no x-rays or anything like that were taken. Now, here's the same horse up further on the left front leg. We've got a knee, for sure, right where the third metacarpal bone is in the knee. Looks like we've got either a splint or a shin trying on the left front. From underneath, the, uh, the feet are relatively normal. We've got kind of a fat cleft on both sides, and uh, that uh, frog looks like it's taken some punishment. Uh, it shouldn't be as hot as it is in this left front foot. Here's the right front foot. Again, to the inside, the foot is hotter, and uh, the sole uh, all the way around the foot has got a little bit too much heat. Uh, we'd like to see in the area where this uh, cursor is, we'd like to see all through here, we'd like to see blue instead of purples in this kind of a picture. It's a little bit too warm there. We want a more dramatic drop off from the um, clefts. This uh, inside cleft is quite hot and that foot was quite hot on the inside. And again, this area here is the frog and that should not be lit up. That frog looks like it's hitting the ground. Uh, again, possibly um, a low-heeled horse or a flat-footed horse. Um, no sign, though, down at the toe of any kind of separation or any indication of an abnormal uh, toe. We don't see anything that rainbows out like it's supposed to down at the bottom of the foot or the toe of the foot. So as far as that uh, real cold spot right in the middle of the foot, uh, still no reason for that here. There could be separation in there. There could be something going on that we can't see with a thermography machine except from the outside. Hard to tell on this in this horse. This horse is is lame, uh, but the knee uh, could be causing the lameness. Now here's a horse with again uh, an extra long foot on the inside, both feet more on the right foot than on the left foot. But otherwise, this horse is pretty clean, uh, at least from the front view. Relatively clean ankles. Very clean knees. Uh, behind you can see the hocks are clean. Very, very clean horse. From the side, that's the left front. Uh, from the side, that's a normal circulatory passage there uh, behind the cannon bone. Nothing abnormal there at all. This is the outside of the right. Uh, and again, always the outsides of the legs are cooler than the insides. So the fact that we have, we show less of a, uh, an intense heat in the uh, circulatory passage still. This is normal. Both sides are normal. Here we've got the uh, left hock is showing a definite problem. A hot spot as opposed to uh, the continuation of a, a blood vessel through that area. Another look at the hock from the other side of the horse. Underneath the feet, this is the uh, right front foot. A um, little warm to the inside, a little bit of pressure on that frog that we don't want to see. Um, we have at the sole on the outside of the foot, we have um, a much more extension of a moderate heat over in this area here move the cursor up to it. That area right there we don't want to see as spread out and hot as it is. And we don't want that frog lit up like that. Same shoe on both of these last two horses. Here's the other foot. I'm beginning to think I'm looking at the left front now. I was looking at the right front before. But again, a bias to heat on the inside of the foot and a lit up 
frog. You can see the outline of the shoe. Sometimes these people tend to bring the tip of the shoe around uh, too far. Uh, in this particular case, uh, we're getting a little bit of that, but this area, this part of the shoe sometimes comes into this area of the foot, and boy, that starts pinching them and really hurts them quick, and the whole thing lights up like a light bulb in that area. So the shoe should not curl around underneath uh, the foot at the back. It should uh, go relatively straight out the back. Big trouble in a right ankle here. Feet are hot but not unbalanced. Uh, we got some XYZ in the uh, right front. And uh, looks like we're going to have XYZ in the ankle and, and both sides working up the leg. Wow. Uh, we have a real hot set of shins here. Um, now this kind of, this is another kind of an artifact. If if your animal has had a bandage on it for the last three or four hours or overnight and you start uh, taking uh, thermographic or temperature readings across these uh, shins that have just been unwrapped a few minutes ago, you're going to get this stovepipe effect that, like we're seeing here. And I'm not sure that we're seeing that here, but that's what it looks like when you've got bandages just come off the legs. And in this case, <coughs> seeing through that heat by raising the temperature window, we can see that there's definitely something going on underneath the uh, knee of the left front. Again, it could be a, sh a buck shin, it can be a fracture. Uh, this, there's no way to tell at this point. This looks like an early sign of a fracture on the way, kind of like the horse we were looking at before. Uh, the right front is not that healthy either, uh, but it's, it's not as dramatic and, and not as acute as what's going on in the left front. close up of that same area, kind of a straight line through there. Anytime you see a straight line like that, you worry more than if you were just uh, looking at a blotch of color. Straight lines mean fracture. Another look at the unbalanced foot, unbalanced to the inside, too long on the inside, heats up the inside of the coronary band and the heat bleeds down toward the bottom of the foot. Now here's um, uh, a left front foot long on the outside. And this is going to be an interesting leg because uh, you can see what this length on the outside does. It tends to uh, hit first. It tends to snap the leg or bend the leg toward the inside. And as we go up the leg, we see a little bit of ankle on the outside. Going up further on the leg, uh, we can see that the left knee is generally warmer than the right knee, although we're not seeing any real hot spots in that in that knee. That's a relatively normal knee. Again, changing our color a little bit, uh, we're still looking at the same legs. Again, up at the knees. There's the hocks of the horse. Those are relatively normal hocks. We're getting some bleed down uh, from the upper legs into those things. We have no hot spots in the lower joints of the hocks. Uh, those are relatively normal hocks. Now this is the outside of the left front and we see some uh, suspensory areas uh, in this horse but one of the things we see is the low part of the splint bone. The little knob at the end of the splint bone is hot and may be broken off or maybe uh, irritating a, a ligament or a tendon in that area, but this little hot spot, this little tiny hot spot on the outside of that left front, probably caused by the foot hitting hard first on the outside, is very likely to be causing the lameness that is being experienced by this horse, who is off in the left front. Um, a little thing like that uh, can indicate a fracture, it can indicate that uh, there is enough rubbing on the adjacent uh, deep flexor tendon or the suspensory that this horse is really experiencing pain from a very little tiny spot like that. Again, different horse, different foot. In this case the right front is 
long on the inside, hot on the inside, showing trouble on the inside. Now, you know, the question is, uh, does what is happening higher on this leg come from the foot, or is the foot coming from what is going on higher in the leg? It, it's my experience that the feet start the problem. And in this case, this horse is showing not only the sore foot, but it's showing an inside suspensory or an inside ankle a little higher as we move up the leg. We can see that inside ankle and we can see also the hint of a splint. We're still looking from the front of the leg. On the left front we see a little hint of a shin but not much really going on there. We're getting a peek now at uh, something going on the inside of the knee. We move up a little further and sure enough we got a third uh, metacarpal bone uh, feeling some some definite pain there as well. All on the inside of that right front where that foot is too long. Is the foot the cause of all this? Uh, probably. Now here's an encouraging start. <coughs> we've got balanced feet. Walking up we've got uh, relatively clean ankles, uh, clean shins. Uh, there's a hint of something on the left front, which is on your right side, up there underneath the knee, but it looks like it's back in the um, soft tissue area behind the cannon bone. Clean knees, no hot spots in the knees. This is a real good looking horse so far. Hocks are reasonably clean, clean. Some activity in those hocks, but there's no real dramatic hot spots in the hocks. Okay, now we're seeing a little bit of XYZ. Um, <clears throat> these kinds of XYZ, and let's just check the temperatures on these and just see how far they go. It's not real dramatic, but um, you're getting a rise of probably two degrees between cooler parts of the leg. We're at 26.7 degrees over to 28.7, two degrees. You know, there's activity there. Uh, Nothing real significant. Now we're starting to see a little bit more. We've got um, suspensory activity, definite suspensory activity. This is a thoroughbred. Moving up the leg, now we see check ligament activity, and that's that's pretty serious. Um, this this one you would probably call a check, uh, or at least call check area. And if you were going to do some ultrasound and sector scanning, that's where you do it, is through this area right through here. That's abnormal. And probably a lot of what's going on down below is being helped by this check ligament area. Let's take some more looks at this horse. Okay, now we've just raised the window a little bit, and we've isolated the exact area in the check ligament area where this is uh, getting hot. And this is where you tell the vet to point the ultrasound sector scanner. You're going to find some torn tissue in there. And again, that is 31.2 degrees at that point. Let's just move it over a little bit and see if we can get a higher temperature anywhere in there. Nope, it's 31.2. And to the rest of the leg, 26.2. We've got almost uh, 5 degrees differential between the front of the leg and the check ligament area. Real significant. Possibly you could feel that heat. From the other sides of the leg, this is the outside of the left front and the inside of the right front. Again, relatively balanced feet. No dramatic thing happening in the right front suspensory area. And again, we're looking at the right front suspensory area in uh, the left of your picture and on the right of your picture is the left front and again we see that little pocket of heat. It's not as dramatic from the outside of the leg as it was from the inside but we're still seeing the suspensory and the check ligament area of that left front quite warm. Now here's a stifle picture and again when you're looking at stifles you're looking the structures that go bad in a stifle are deep, 
down compared to the things that go wrong on the legs, which are almost all close to the surface. So it's very difficult to see uh, something going on in a stifle. However, in this case, uh, we're looking at the horse's right stifle, and we can call it normal. But when we look at the left stifle, we can see a hot spot, a definite hot spot in that stifle down in this area right here. Now, as, as to what that structure is and what all that means, um, I don't know. I'm not uh, real experienced in, in looking at stifles, but that is definitely a hot spot that someone, a veterinarian, might want to investigate if, if somebody suspects that this horse has a, has a stifle. Normally, I don't look at stifles with a thermography because most of the things that are going on in a stifle don't show up on the surface as a, a temperature change. Same horse, this is his front feet. This is the uh, left front foot. Don't like to see all this heat on the outside of the sole out by the shoe. This is way, way too much heat. Now, uh, possibly we're looking at bruises here. Uh, possibly we're just looking at a flat-footed horse that's uh, taking too much weight on the sole. Notice that the frog on this foot is uh, fine. Uh, no uh, heat in the frog. That's as cool like it's supposed to be. The clefts are roughly like they're supposed to be. But that sole is experiencing either bruising or some stress that it doesn't need to experience. We don't like to see this, this heat. Now the little cold area that the cursor is going through right now is a piece of straw. Got to clear mud and straw and all that stuff out of the foot if you're going to get a good picture. The other foot uh, shows the same kind of a problem but uh, more extensive and we also see a little bit of uh, frog heat in this foot. This area right here has got to be sore on the animal. We don't want to see that and then up into the frog area. This hot area in the frog we don't want to see either. It's just too much heat. So those are abnormal feet. Now sometimes I get in trouble with my machine and uh, this is one of the occasions when I did. This horse is an expensive horse. It uh, has won a lot of money. It's a thoroughbred. And uh, it has had trouble in the right front leg for some time and has been being treated uh, for a foot problem. Now, the foot is clearly long on the inside and probably uh, helping to cause some of the problems that are going on above it, but uh, the foot is not the sore part of the horse. Clearly, in this picture, uh, you can see the inflammatory process. You can see that where the tissues are inflamed and where the lesion is, there's a, a great deal of circulation, and that's up at the ankle. Uh, the diagnostics uh, performed on this horse prior to the time that I got there uh, suggested to the veterinarian that uh, the foot was the problem. Pet pedal osteitis was the diagnosis. But clearly, uh, from these pictures, both ankles are in trouble. The right front ankle is, mo is more serious. Uh, exactly what is going on in the ankle, I can't tell you from this picture, but I can tell you that, it, that the horse does not have a foot problem. Uh, he's got an ankle problem in, t in terms of where the soreness is coming from. Um, that's one of the things you want to remember about taking temperatures of uh, legs is that, uh, again, it tells you where, it doesn't tell you what. So I can't look at that ankle joint and say, well, we've got a cartilage problem or we've got uh, synovial membrane inflammation or a suspensory or, or what. An x-ray will talk to that to some degree and so well an ultrasound sector scan. But one thing I can say for sure is that if that horse is sore in that right front leg, it is not the foot, it is the ankle. And that's very evident. Uh, but sometimes if you're not there first and if somebody else is already diagnosed, then there is a vested interest in 
uh, being correct on their diagnosis and they'll disagree. So I try to be there early. Try to catch these things as they're coming on and see them coming and help solve the problem before it gets so critical that the horse, an expensive horse, can't race anymore and blame is being passed around from one to the other and the attending veterinarian has a vested interest in, in being right because it's a very costly mistake that he is making. Again, can you guess where the problem is on this horse? It's very clear. When we're looking at the temperatures of that uh, left front leg, we can see that uh, at the ankle, which is slightly inflamed on the inside, but at the left front ankle, we're looking at 19.2 degrees centigrade. Across the way, in the same area, we're looking at at least 25.7 degrees. Again, this is these differentials are feelable by hand, and uh, whoever's looking after this horse should be able to feel that with their fingers. Uh, clearly, uh, it's a wraparound ankle. Uh, again, no tendons and ligaments on the front of the ankle that, in that area at least, that can uh, get inflamed. So you figure that the synovial membrane of the joint is inflamed, and that means the likelihood that something interior is going wrong, that the synovial fluid is not right, that there's probably de debris floating around uh, in that ankle, and that has to be cleaned up. So, at least to start with on this horse, we've got an ankle on the right front. Beautiful knees, looks like a little bit of a splint or a shin trying on the right front as well. We'll look at the side of it in a minute. There's a little hot spot on the uh, right front at the splint. Looks like a splint. And the, hottest, the hottest spot of the ankle uh, on the inside is back toward the suspensory area. Still, we had a wraparound ankle. Uh, so while the suspensory may be involved, uh, we still have uh, a lot of worrying to do about what's going on inside that ankle joint. Might be useful to take x-rays, might be useful to take uh, synovial fluid analysis. Now here is a case where we have a foot, definitely a foot, in trouble. Um, that's an extremely hot foot. Big, big trouble. Let's move up the leg a little bit. Uh, the ankle is warm, but it's warm probably sympathetic to what's going on to the foot. The knees are normal. Uh, the heat that you see there is a bleed down from the upper body heat. No real significant thing going on there. Got some suspensory, maybe some low tendon showing on that left front. Uh, XYZs are showing. Uh, this is very likely to be a low heeled animal. And down at the heel, you get, this is kind of hard to understand what you're looking at here, but that big area of heat on the left of your screen where the X is, that's the suspensory down through the XYZs, down into the heels of the foot, which are hotter than Hades. That's a very, very hot foot uh, at the bulbs of the heel. Horse has a pair of hocks that are looking at us pretty strong. Those are hot hocks. Uh, you'd ask the question of these hocks whether they'd been painted. If not, uh, you've got some pretty severely inflamed hocks. Now there's the foot in question with the temperature raised considerably on it. We're looking hard to find out what's really going on in that foot. Looks like that uh, uh, to the outside of the foot it's warmer than to the inside. There's the hottest spot on the coronary band. It's to the side, outside. Now here's a view of that foot and we don't see anything to the outside on the sole, but we do see a toe that is very hot. Now again, when these horses have low heels and long toes, uh, one of the problems that occurs is that those toes experience a lot more um, leverage on them when they're trying to break over. When the leg moves back behind the vertical, and the leg wants to break over. If that toe's too long, then the toe experiences a whole lot of pressure. 
at its tip. And you can see on this toe that this foot is definitely experiencing a problem. Now, if you have a case of uh, laminitis and rotation of the coffin bone, uh, you're going to see a similar pattern to this, <coughs> where the coffin bone is actually trying to push down through the sole of the foot. Uh, this is not a case of laminitis here uh, by way of x-rays of the foot, but uh, that's also what rotation of the coffin bone looks like from underneath the sole when you're looking with uh, a thermographic device. So this tape should give you an idea of at least some of the normal and abnormal uh, temperature scans that you're going to be looking at either with a thermograph or with handheld devices. If you're going to use handheld devices uh, that give you uh, temperature readings, uh, you should use ones that uh, read down to about a tenth of a degree centigrade. And um, it's best, I found that the best uh, thing to do with those is to get uh, anatomy drawing and some colored pens and try to uh, duplicate the kinds of pictures you're seeing right now where you can show where the hot spots are with the hotter colors and show where the cool spots are with the cooler colors as you map out uh, get yourself a thermal map of your animal. Uh, it's it's quite effective, and when you're dealing with an owner of a racehorse or a, a veterinarian or a trainer, it's good to be, for them to be able to visualize exactly where these hot spots are. Um, of course, I I like uh, my device, the ProBi. Uh, there are several manufacturers, different manufacturers of this type of an imaging device. They're all very expensive. Uh, the one you're you seeing right now is uh, something that sells complete sells for about thirty-seven thousand uh, dollars. There are some as low as twenty-two thousand dollars. But when you consider, for example, going to a horse sale and uh, potentially spending thirty thousand dollars on each baby you buy, if you're going to a thoroughbred auction, or fifteen thousand dollars on every. Uh, standard bread you you buy, or five thousand dollars on every quarter horse you buy. Uh, one of these machines sorting out the injured horses from the sound horses uh, could be quite useful and, and pay for itself very quickly. The difference between using a machine like this and using uh, a regular uh, pyrometer uh, is that the pyrometer will take about 45 minutes to completely scan a horse where uh, an infrared machine uh, requires about five minutes of your time and the horse's time and the groom's time uh, to scan. So, you know, there are ways to do this inexpensively and there are ways to do it expensively. Um, the main thing to know is to know what these heat patterns actually mean and where the hot spots are supposed to be and where they're not supposed to be. So hopefully whatever means you use to do your diagnostics with, uh, this tape will give you a very good idea of what's right and what's wrong when you're going through your group of horses. I hope this tape proves useful to you. hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.